So, hello guys. Today I'm basically going to be talking about the Ascensions, which is the Season 14 Gold Unit. And the unit is basically seen as a assassin type of unit, mainly to snipe specialties and heroes. So, the Ascensions are kind of in like a weird spot to be honest. Most people would consider that the unit is not really that good because of what it what it does because the unit is technically like a if you realistically call it it would be more of like in like the form of a bait unit because the unit is like after the order of engagement say it's uh shields going first maidens going after capitals insert they think they will literally go in the last if it's a big infantry death ball otherwise they will be playing alone sniping range units sniping heroes but at the end of the day this unit is going to be playing alone because in a big team fight, it's really hard to use it. So, here in this guide, I'm basically going to be talking about the basic mechanics of this unit and maybe some other things that maybe people don't know about it. So, here we go. And now we're talking about the doctrines. So, the doctrines is a interesting topic for assistance as well because assistance is one of the units that have two different build lines for it because the yeah, assistants you can either choose to build them to be even quicker so to let it rotate faster, let it snipe specialty faster it's also like um, benefits to how the units I mean, in one work because it runs faster and then the unit kind of like become harder to target but basically the the, the unit doesn't really need that movement speed, which is why I say you, need, you can run both of the lines. So, my current build, as you can see, the Tier 5 Sprint Doctrine with a special 10% movement speed doctrine. It basically lets my unit run faster than Zebra. So, the reason why I do this is because I really love to die specialty with my unit. So, the unit will go full in and then be able to get out really easily as long as you don't get caught like, literally all the way there or something. But you can also trade those doctrines out, put on both the assertion doctrines, and put in more damage. And if you choose between damage, if you see the regular auto attack cycle, it depends on your abilities. If you use one a lot, you want slashing damage. If you're using two a lot, then you're using piercing damage. But you're mainly going to be using the piercing damage, as that is going to be a very high DPS value for you when we look into it in the future. So for her attentions, the variancy lines are similar to before, it also does depend on your playstyle. So there is the three different lines that you, you can play. The full bottom line basically increases your prowl ability, which is your one. And this basically allows your one to do more damage after every time it hits and also drops the smoke and jump over units. But the smoke it drops is not that helpful because the unit does have the iframe during the jump. So it's not really as huge as you would hope. But other than that, the full bottom line, you can run it just to like DPS. But, but the main problem with that is that the probability does not do that much damage per se against good units because the animation is way very slow. So like if you're against like a high DPS unit, like 40s units like that, they're going to be able to DPS against you because your animation with your attack is not as fast, but the two attack animations are a lot faster. So, this is like the full bottom line is not super preferred. It is usable though. And then you can also choose between the full top or the middle line. So, the full top is actually really good because the full top allows you to actually get the two second action point cooldown this is basically what fuels your abilities and we'll see later that without abilities the assistants are actually useless so if you want more sustained fights usually to dive more range units you can just go straight up go for top line but if you're gonna play more risky you can also try out full middle line which is basically designed around increasing your increasing your eviscerate damage and that basically allows you to like infantry and to one shot them and stuff like that. But the main, but the main thing, main consensus with this unit is that 
Basically, no matter what build you're going, you're always looking for a flank. Middle line, you're flanking infantry. Top line, you're flanking range. And bottom line, you're flanking... You're, you're still flanking, but you're probably flanking close. But one thing that you have to be careful of, though, with the Hashishin, is that even though the variance line does, like, say with the middle line, I believe, it does say that you do reduce damage you take from Cav. You're still gonna die to cab, but it just depends on like what type of cab you're against. The owls, it's gonna be your biggest issue when using them, so always avoid the owls no matter what variation line you take. In case you're wondering, the formations don't actually do a thing. The formations are, I guess it's bugged or something, but the post formations are the exact same, so you don't have to worry about the formation you set your unit in. Now we're going to be talking about the auto attack. So there isn't really that much to say about the auto attacks for the Ashinshins. So we'll just we'll just show it here. This is a iron cap spear. It's a blue spear, and my friend that was testing it with had rather bad doctrines on them, unspeakable doctrines, and the attack is not that strong. So as you can see, you don't really want to rely on your regular auto attacks. It's not that much damage. Now, your one ability is going to be your main mobility type of ability. So this ability is kind of special because at the end of it, it does give you a damage buff. So you can use this to farm like units like passes and stuff like that. But the one, the thing that makes it super strong is the fact that it can pass through like um, units it finds in the way. So like if there's cab, it will jump over it. If there's skills, it will jump over it. And then the speed is so fast that a lot of rage units, like those fast allowable in the distance, are unable to lock onto them properly. So this is like the main reason why you want to use Hishishin to dive specialty units or units similar to that, because the unit is very hard to track. And that movement speed is faster than it is <laughs> When you have shield walls in front of you, the unit can immediately pass through it with this ability. It doesn't really seem to stop and by any means, so as long as you have the ability active while keep on running. And when you have it around like two diameter circles away, that's the maximum range where the unit will start running back to where it where there's like a closest enemy nearby. So this ability is mainly used as like a repositioning, so it is a sense that I use my ability to jump over the shell wall to instantly hit it with my Abyssal from Wizard. And this is going to be your main combo when you're fighting Shuddiness from the front. Trying to get over them and then hitting them from the back over the If you do the one fairly close, so you then will jump over and get stuck in between. This is a fight scenario, you can use the one immediately after you use your ability and then get them out. This is very good for diving specialty units because it does the first level. Here you can see the damage buff provided by the one ability. So it's right now it's just the auto attack and then if I use the one ability, it does do some extra DPS, but once you see it going against like very high DPS units from the front, it will be a little bit more tough because I actually don't really do that much damage. And then if we compare it to the Abyssal which is our two ability on the side, it's going to be a slightly different because the Abyssal is like a, how does it's, it's, it's like basically the ability kind of do a slide through them after their second combo, and this ability does a lot of damage as it kind of just goes through the unit and phases through them to hit them in the back. It's very strong against shield. You can have the unit go all the way through and then turn around. That is the option as well. This allows your unit to perfectly hit in the back. But this is not necessarily the ideal because oftentimes if you send the unit too far back, usually there might be like another unit nearby or things like that. So oftentimes just sending it like right behind is usually enough to get the job done. But this is like only in a 1v1 scenario. When the unit jumps over heroes and other units, it does have like a slight staggering effect. This doesn't really affect that much to be honest, but it's just fun to know. 
your Viscerate ability, which is your 2, is going to be your main single target ability and also the ability you want to hit units in the back from. So here I just hit from the front and then once I use the Viscerate, my unit phases through and will immediately start attacking the units from the back. And this is fairly strong against shields, so as you can see, this shield didn't really stand a chance. It is very strong for DPS, but this also drains your action points very fast. And as you can see here, I can use it to farm peasants very well. Um, the last about this clip, it's just to show the DPS. When it comes to the smoke bomb, the ability is very weird per se, because usually you would think that the smoke bomb would be very helpful, but not, you don't necessarily need it as oftentimes like even if you use it it doesn't really help you that much so here like the ISGs the unit isn't really a unit that does damage so in this case you don't really need to do it the smoke bomb is just mainly to help the unit tank more more damaging units like these stalwarts here so as you can see my unit isn't really that damaged when I sent them through that's because the smoke bomb allows them to just completely dodge some attacks but if I just directly charge through it, even with the iframe, I lost a few models and a lot of them took a lot of damage. So this is, you gotta be careful of it, this is it fast. And if there's multiple columns, you can't jump over it easier because the smoke is not that wide. So you really don't want to fight in a sick formation, like um, Halberdier Sergeants so or Messi up, for example. Here we're going to show some examples of everything we put together. So here we just show the typical if you send the one from the front and then you use the two to the side. And the bits of unit will basically spread out by itself, but the initial point of contact is very small, so a short sword can belly flop it. What you want to do is you send your unit in through through, and then you want to press two mid-air while there's still iframe, so your unit pretty much guaranteed that you spread out and you can use the one immediately to spread them out even further. And this is basically the combo you want to keep on spamming, especially if you're using top lane, because that will allow you to kill Chevys really well. And then here, as you can see, I can jump over the stalwarts a little bit as I attack them in the back. The stalwarts are one of the one of the units that you would have a rather nice time against because the stalwarts have like the weak point for you to take advantage. So efficiencies are technically kind of bugged in a sense because the unit has like a very big aggro range so like when you're like anywhere close to an enemy hero or unit and you press C the unit will immediately go attack whenever that's close and once you're further away it will come back to you and this, uh, this will happen all the time so if you want your unit to sprint after you without using abilities you gotta just spam the button again and again but otherwise, the unit is fairly obedient because once you use the power ability, it will just go wherever you want it to go. But when it comes to the actual targeting, though, because of its aggressiveness, it's also similar to like the old Huskaro AI, where if the unit's like behind the wall and stuff, it's going to have a difficult time trying to attack you because it'll just run into the wall. This is a pretty big problem. So if you're like fighting around walls and stuff, you have to be careful that you need to send your unit fully through before you like have them turn around because otherwise the unit will get stuck on random ledges and you would be like hey why is my unit not doing damage because your unit did not even reach the battle yet so you want to make sure that you're keeping track of this and always making sure that your units are like, in like a fairly open area because the unit sucks in very tight areas as the as a unit gets stuck on random pieces of wood. <laughs> when it comes to the unit's turning, the unit is pretty pretty weird as you see that like, there's like a problem with some cab units where when you're turning really fast, you kind of have a struggle to turn. It's similar for the Hashinshins, it's just the don't really have that much of an issue, but once you use a sprint, the unit will actually start getting stuck and this is going to be a big problem so if you're using the unit it's better to have them go from one end to the other like in a straight line before you keep on turning them that way you can maximize your movements and for this unit you really want to flank units right so you're going to be looking for opportunities to 
to intercept you as are rotating because that's when you're gonna get like the easiest kills and you, since you can't just kill like 10 units with a fit. But if you're trying to attack directly from the back, you'll find yourself not having a good time because the unit really does not attack fast enough from the back. So you have to intercept from the front and then hit it sideways with the two. That way you can catch some of the unit with the CC and you can kill whatever you catch. And then because of your superior movement speed, you can actually keep on catching as long as you don't notice you, which is a really good thing about his shins when it comes to trying to catch units. When you're trying to play against backline units, this is going to be what you're focusing for, by the way. You want to be careful of something. So, Shenji Bomb, if you just decide to walk into a Shenji Bomb, you will be knocked down. The unit is not CCing you during its run. So, it's, it's, it, will be, it will be a problem if you, you get CC'd because the knockdown stays for the whole duration. When you're getting hit by coconuts, you also take combustion. So like when you got a set of blades, the unit can't run either because this unit is not immune to fire. So you want to be careful of coconuts and likewise if you're afraid of coconuts, you also want to be careful of flamers. So the flamers, when it comes to the hellfire, the unit will also start having a rough time on the ground. So if you're like diving flamers, you always want to wait. But their abilities to be on cooldown. So like you see the one and two just being used, you know that you have around like 10 seconds before their rotation comes back to die through. And then here as you can see, if I'm sending my unit like all the way down there with all the speed, I can reach the backline extremely quickly. This is extremely strong because a lot of people won't really notice what's even going on. So there I started with like 90 unit kills and then I went back there what I'm killing over there is actually Tertios, I believe, and then I killed the Tertios, got some unit kills, and then I quickly did. If I if I left a little bit earlier, I would have actually got him my unit out. And then here I'm using the exchange things to test if I can get burned multiple times by the flamers. Yes, you can take a blaze effect double times if you get if you're hit by the flame, then it triple if you're hit by a my bottom line experience. Here I'm gonna show how to dive Chevys. So as you can see, the Chevys have a really hard time actually focusing your shishes because of the because of the dodge. And so at the end, the Hashish has only really lost two models, and the Chevys lost all of, all of them. So this is like the one way that you can counter Chevy because you can beat them on the head. Yeah. When matching against melee units, the you want to look for opportunities to mainly focus on exposed flanks. So here, like I can see one of the show maiden. You can also jump across Merbelo charges. This is very unexpected for most people because you would think that the Merbelo's AOE attack would completely decimate them. But as I said earlier, the Prowl does have like a iframe so you can jump over most sources really easily. And then you can also do this to Star Wars, so here there's a more perfect version compared to the one I showed earlier, where instead of letting my two ability fully go through, I just let my unit kind of have fun with the backline and not really go to the front until it's like almost dead. So this allows you to retain more HP that way. And you can also just toggle the one if you want to, from, from at that point, you know? <laughs> Against Cav, if you see the Owls, just run the heck away. There's literally nothing you can do against them. And if the Owls ever manage to catch up to your unit, you're gonna have a tough time. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> when you're facing the Sars, you can just immediately charge into them. This is unexpected because the unit iframe actually lasts long enough for them to dodge the star charge fully. It also works against monastic, it also works against dagger axe charge, but it doesn't really work against cataphracts and dagger axes when they're do in the rally to me, because the rally to me is a different beast entirely compared to a traditional last charge. When you're going for hero kills with this unit, 
it is actually quite consistent because of the movement speed you can easily catch up to people that are exposed as the unit just instantly can kill people with one shot so here I instantly one shot the pike pretty much and then he instantly killed them all even if they were sword this in the scenario the two can also, like, basically half HP them with one combo. Pretty strong. A big problem for the Hashinshins is that the unit kind of has a hard time hitting heroes because the animation takes way too long. The one animation is, like, almost as if it's, like, a second behind. Well, the two animations is like slightly closer behind but they're still able, not able to reach. This is a big problem for Ashishas which is why you have to do hero play to help the Ashishas kill heroes otherwise by themselves they'll really never hit anything. So overall the Ashishas are an exceptional unit. I wouldn't say that they are meta because they own like a very specific role rather than like some other units. Like for example, the Star Wars, you can get away with 15 Star Wars, you can get away with 15 Chevy, 15 Reals, but you can't get away with more than like 5 Ashishans because the unit cannot really 1v1 like um, other units if it's like in the, in the middle of a big death ball. As a unit itself, it's like um, it's, it's a little bit we can CC and stuff like that. So I think the unit would be fairly well used. I, I think they're still going to be like another buff that fixes your passing against the walls and stuff. So we will see like when that happens, and hopefully it will be a little bit better. The good thing about Hashishin though is that I feel they are fairly balanced actually at the moment because they are currently able to somewhat contend with the current units which are all like super strong meta driven units and the fact that it's super weak against Cav is kind of annoying but it kind of does make sense because it's like you know it, it, it's a light arbor for just running into a horse right at the moment the unit is not really that much worth buying out for or something like that because the unit is not like meta changing you know it's it's really good if used well but if you have more than like a few of them in one team you're it's not it's not very good so i, I think it's better to stick to what you guys know